from the UCKG Macau to the world. The journey of faith of the holy campaign of revolt on Mount Sinai. Hello everyone, we are here today to give continuity to the journey of faith. And as you all know, it is important for you to prepare yourself because on the final moments of this program, we will also be doing a special prayer for everyone that is connected. And if you want, you can put on the comment section below the names of your family or especially those that are suffering. It can be a friend of yours or someone that is not so close to you, but you know that they are suffering, that they are going through a difficult moment, a difficult situation. So put their names down below, or you can share the link of this program to them. Because the moment of the prayer will be very important for them to be strengthened spiritually, to overcome the situation that they are going through in this moment. But not only the prayer. What is also important, it is the message that will be given to you. Because when we started this journey of faith, there was one Bible verse that it was very important for the beginning of the journey. And I want to reread it with you guys because it has an important and deep message that needs to be understood. So let us read together the book of Exodus chapter 24 on verse 12 it says there then the lord said to moses come up to me on the mountain and be there i'm going to read again come up to me on the mountain and be there so what we understand with this bible verse is that what god wants to bring to you it is something great it is something tremendous what he wants to do in your life. And why is that we want to explain in detail? That is something great that the Lord wants to do. Because we want you to understand that what God wants to do, it's not just a blessing, just a simple improvement in your life. On the contrary, he wants to completely transform your life. That is what God wants to do. Because, Pastor Oni, there are many people that they pray to God asking for a better life. And indeed, to have a better life is very good. But it's far more better for this person to change her life completely. And that is what God wants to do. So that is why he wants this person to not only go up the mountain, but to be there, to stay there, because he wants to transform the life of this person as a whole. But the transformation, it is only achievable through the Holy Spirit. That is what we are offering this person, a change of course in their lives. Because the Holy Spirit comes when the person comes up on the mount, but we stay there, remain there. We can see, oh, Pastor Rodrigo, how many people, they have come once on their life, throughout their whole life, they came on the mountain, I mean, on the altar, to place their life there. But unfortunately, they didn't keep their life there on the mountain. What God, he want us, it is for us to come up in the mountain, place our life, and keep our life there on the mountain. Because God, through his spirit, he will guide us. He will show us what we have to do. And this is what God did in the time of Moses. Why God asked Moses to stay in the mountain? Because God wants to talk to him. God wants to show to him what he had to do. And this is what this person that is watching, that has been connected with us, that it is living his faith, have to do. Climb the mountain, come up in the mountain, and be there. Because God has great things to do in her life. Just for you to understand a comparison, imagine this. If someone achieves a blessing in their lives, an improvement in their lives, it can be a prosperity, it can be a healing, it can be something that they truly need, and they receive such thing. But if that person receives only that thing, it is not enough for her life to be transformed. 
It is not enough. It is the same thing for you to achieve what we were talking about when we started the program. The promised land, but without having the promised presence. You will not have someone to guide you, someone to show you the way, someone to strengthen you, because that is what the Holy Spirit wants to give to you. He wants to transform your life as a whole. He doesn't want only you to leave Egypt, to leave the situation that you are going through. He wants to give to you a total new life, but it is only achievable through Him. For you to understand more of what we are explaining, I want you to pay attention to this testimony, to this story, and you're going to see what's the primary objective of God for your life. So let us watch, and after, we will come back. Please, let's watch together. It all started um, on the sixth floor in my university flat. My boyfriend had just broken up with me. I remember phoning my mom and saying, I'm going to jump. I'm tired of this life. I'm fed up. I don't get it. I felt worthless, to be honest. And I explained to her how I was feeling. And she said to me, don't jump. When I was younger, um, my mom and my dad separated. And whenever he visited on holiday, I would always see fights in the house. And I would always feel that need to protect my mom in the process. It also got to a point where I developed a hate towards my dad. Because I remember thinking to myself, if you're my father figure, like how can you treat my mom this way? But at the same time, because my mom was always working, I felt like I needed somebody. So when I was quite young, um, I met an older gentleman, well, an older guy, effectively. We started a relationship. We dated for about two years, and then he slapped me. He slapped me in public. So all my friends were around. I was so embarrassed. I felt really sad inside, really upset with myself, because I felt like I was repeating the same mistake that my mom had made. Um, now it's called depression. But I do think I went through that point in my life of where I was struggling to sleep at night. Um, I found it hard to go out. There will be days where I didn't want to go to school, but I couldn't explain what was happening. I then entered into a new relationship. Um, I was a little bit old at this time. I figured I was ready. Relationship started really well. There was things that were happening that was quite similar to what I, I noticed before, but I thought, okay, as long as he doesn't hit me or I don't feel threatened, I'm okay. But it got to a point where we were having an argument. We were walking across a bridge and I felt threatened at that point. And I remember thinking, before you hit me and embarrass me in public, I'm gonna topple you first. I don't know where I got the strength from, but I literally picked him up and was about to throw him over the bridge. He was hanging over. And I remember I grabbed him and we were just looking at each other in shock, like, wow. Like, I didn't realize you were that strong or you can do something like that. But I could remember thinking to myself as well, this is bad. I forgave him for getting me that angry. He forgave me for nearly toppling him over the bridge. And things got worse. I'm not going to pretend. He then started cheating. And every time he cheated, he would justify. Remember that time? He would always say that to me and I would always feel bad and think, okay, yes, it's my fault. You're cheating on me because it's my fault. About a couple, uh, about a year or so later, I was in my flat in uni and he called me and he said, I don't think this is going to work. And I remember thinking, what? <laughs> after all this, after all the forgiveness, after all the cheating, all the lying, you have the nerve to phone me and tell me you don't think this is going to work. But even though I said that to him, inside I was broken. I could feel myself shaking. I didn't feel like if I had any control over the situation. I just listened to what he was saying. I was like, okay, okay. I started crying. And I remember hanging up the phone. And I remember looking by the window. And I phoned my mom. And I said to my mom, I'm going to jump. And she goes, jump from where? And I'm like, I'm tired. My boyfriend just broke up with me. And I remember my mom saying to me, you don't need to jump. She was trying so hard to convince me not to jump, but I was very adamant. And she kept saying, no, don't jump. And I didn't. I had relationships in between, but I said to myself, I would never get hurt again. So in my mind, I had full control, effectively. You hurt me, goodbye. Then eventually I met my boyfriend at the time. She looked different sounded different and things happened very quickly because within the first month she already got pregnant and 
in her getting pregnant we didn't have the stability of starting a family because you're we just about to finish university no jobs we didn't know what we were going to do but my family background we tend to deal with everything as it comes so i knew we still had to solve this problem and we had to find a solution but from her side she needed the answers right there and then i didn't know what was going to happen i didn't have the answers which she wanted there and then so this led to the situation where she decided to then go for an abortion because i wasn't giving the answers that she was looking for after the abortion uh, my boyfriend and i stayed together it was a struggle but we said that we we're gonna make this work because it wasn't a joke that i got pregnant he for him it was serious for him it meant that i was gonna be his wife eventually at the time i didn't see it but i was like okay he wants it so i'm gonna go with it. then his cousin invited him to the church a couple months later and if I'm honest, I started to see a change before that. I noticed that when we would speak, he wouldn't argue back. He would be quiet. And I used to be thinking, what is wrong with you? Like, say something. And he wouldn't. So by the time he invited me to attend the UCKG with him, I was like, okay, I want to go and see what has made you change so much. And I remember sitting through the first service. And now I understand it was God that was speaking to me. But at the time, I thought, did he go and speak to the pastor? and talk about our relationship, talk about everything we were going through, because that message felt like an attack, basically. But I sat down and as I was listening, I was like, I've made so much mistakes. And yes, I can blame my mom and I can blame my dad, but I was also an adult at this point. And I realized that I came to the Universal Church with so much complexes. I knew I was sad inside, but I didn't realize how severe my sadness was. Um, so we kept coming to the Universal Church. Um, we got married on the altar. We sacrificed financially. We sacrificed for growth, development, and we got all that because God honors. You know, his word says, come knock, he will open the door, etc. You go by faith. And we saw the difference. We saw our financial life change. We were able to get out of debt. We have a beautiful boy. He's now seven. We saw things moving forward, but... I was chasing the promised land and so was my husband at this point because we were married already. Um, but we weren't happy. We were still arguing. The violence that possibly she'd seen before then now came into the marriage. I wasn't naturally someone who wanted, who liked to fight or even argue. I tend to just withdraw. I'd either leave the house. She thinks maybe I'm trying to leave her, but I was just trying to leave the situation because I couldn't understand because I wasn't brought up in violence. I didn't let go of a lot of things. I could remember being slapped. I could remember in going, if I feel threatened, I will fight first. And I always fought first with my husband. I always was ready to be in a boxing match with him basically. But I remember there was one point where I scratched him and it was bad because it was deep. And I watched my husband as we went to church protect me and protect our marriage. Because obviously a scratch is obvious, to be honest. And where it was, it was quite clear. We had a disagreement, we had a fallout. But he just said to everyone, mind your business. And I watched, I heard him say it and I watched him say it. And I believe from that situation, that was where God really spoke to me. This was like about four years into the marriage. I realized where I was going wrong. That even though we conquered so many blessings, i.e. financial life, um, things were moving forward, etc., I still wasn't happy. It wasn't enough. I was tired. Um, I was doing campaigns. Yes, God was on in my faith, on in the faith of us in the marriage. But I still felt empty. I still felt like nothing was good enough, even though I could see the change. I could always remember someone saying to me, remember where you came from. And I remembered where I came from. But I also realized that a lot of the habits that I had, I hadn't got rid of. So I was still insecure. I was still depressed never openly admitted it because I didn't want to have that on my record um, going forward in life. Um, I was angry. God revealed to me that I actually had hatred towards my husband for everything that we went through. Um, and that was hard because it was in that sacrifice that God really showed me how I felt inside. It was difficult. 
I remember having to go to my husband and asking for forgiveness. And I'm bearing in mind I've done it before, but this time it was different. I said, God, I've had enough. I, I can't continue like this anymore. Every time something happened, every time we had a disagreement, I would have that same feeling again. And it's like I was trying to fight myself from not attacking or going into that mode of where I felt really, really threatened, basically. I remember this was a campaign. And I said, God, show me what it is you want me to change. And everything he showed me was to do with me. Most of the time, um, the issues are focused on me. Oh, we need to change our marriage or he needs to change. But this time was purely for herself. Because most of the time we used to do campaigns together. But this time she decided to do herself, her own, um, to, change, to change herself, really. I took it seriously. I asked for forgiveness. Um, from God first, then I had to forgive myself, and then to seal it off, I went to my husband, I went to my husband's mom, I went to my mom, my sister, because I said I didn't want anything to be stopping me, because I said to God, I'm going to give you everything, but I also want everything. I can't leave your altar. I cannot come down the same. I cannot come down and two days later, something happens and I'm going through the exact same cycle, the exact same emotions, the exact same fight. And I remember clearly in that campaign, very kind. I remember where I was sat in the Universal Church. I remember seeking the presence of God because I realized the importance of having the Holy Spirit. Yes, it was lovely that we conquered so much, but that really and truly didn't bring me the happiness that I needed. I stood in the service and before the pastor even said, start to pray, start to, I was already seeking because I said, God, I've given you everything. I have to leave today with your Holy Spirit. I have to, because that's what I'm missing. That's what I need right now. And I'm going to be honest, before I climbed the altar with my sacrifice, I received the Holy Spirit. So when I climbed and I came down, I came down and I knew. I had the assurance. I, I can't even describe it, to be honest. I just knew that God was with me. And that through every step, as long as I had a listening ear to hear, he will guide me through everything. And from that moment, things in my marriage changed. I was no longer fighting to not be a certain way. It came natural. So I no longer had the desire to feel threatened. Even if we had a disagreement, my husband and I, I didn't feel that anger that I felt before. It was a matter of, I would listen. I might talk, I might say something, but I always remember going, God, intervene in this situation right now. I'd go into a conversation in my mind thinking, I kind of know how this is going to go. I then left the situation thinking, okay, something is different here because it didn't go the way it's been going. And obviously I'd already had my reactions planned. If she does this, I'll do this. If she does this, I'll, that, I'll do that. But now she's changed and I didn't know what to react in a sense so then i then have to have a new picture of her new image of her, how i think about her and now have to deal with um the issues that i've now built up within myself to try and uh, deal with the marriage but um because she'd now changed i then now had to also change within myself our son sees a different mom and dad my son's seven now he wants to come out and evangelize he's seen that difference effectively same with my mom my mom and i were close all this started from that first point of um coming to the altar receiving the holy spirit and then she started making the changes within herself which allowed all these other things to now fall in place from my own testimony from my own life i can say to someone you don't need to divorce you don't need to separate fight god wants to help you so now, my husband and I, we are happily married, but this is all to do with having the Holy Spirit. Um, in the beginning, we seek the promised land, but we understood the importance of having the promised presence, which is the Holy Spirit in our lives. As you saw in the testimony, her life was not only improved, it was completely transformed. And this is the proposal that God has for you. But in order, my friend, for you to receive such thing, it is not only important for you to climb, but to stay within the guidance of God. So it is important for us to give continuity to the faith. 
It is like the journey of faith. Perhaps this person has connected herself and this prayer that she has been doing, she has been seeing some improvements. Perhaps you even used your faith and came to the church and when you came to the church, already something happened. But what we want for you is not for something to happen. You need a change of course in your life. And that is what the Holy Spirit gives to you as He gave to this testimony. You see that once the Holy Spirit came into her life, she was completely transformed to the point that no one recognized her because she was transformed. And because she was transformed, her husband was transformed. And because they were transformed, even the life of the Son was transformed. This is what God is offering to you. So you need to understand that it is important for us to keep ourselves connected to God, seeking Him, praying in faith, because what He wants to give to you, it is this change, this transformation of your life so that you can have a before and after in their lives, Pastor Rodrigo. And as we have been talking about Pastor Rodrigo, everything that this person needs, it is on the altar. For example, this person on the testimony, her life was transformed in general, but first it started with her. The Holy Spirit came upon her. She was baptized with the Holy Spirit, and through her life transformation, herself, the husband was converted, and the blessing is still reaching out the son. Can you see? The blessing is start with her once she received the Holy Spirit, and was spread out into the entire family. This is what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Sometimes we see people so worried about their family, overwhelmed about the son, the daughter, about many things in life, when they should be worried about to prioritize the altar, the mountain, her life there. Because what the Holy Spirit has to do in her life goes beyond than she can imagine. And again, it starts with her and will be spreading out through the entire family. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. And of course, we need to remember that it's not easy to do such thing. If to go up is hard, but to remain there, it is even harder. But why it is harder? Because what you will receive is far more greater than just going up. So remain yourself in faith. Do not let the circumstances, situations, problems, as he said, overwhelm you. Don't be overwhelmed by those things. On the contrary, this is the moment that you need to use your faith even more for us to go beyond the limits. Because when the Holy Spirit comes to someone, He does not come upon a life partially. He doesn't come in pieces. The Holy Spirit, He comes as a whole. And that is how He wants to enter your life. So if you give yourself as a whole to God, and you remain in His presence, He will come to you in such way, and in such way, your life will be transformed. So this message goes for you. We need to keep ourselves seeking Him in the same faith, in the same spirit, no matter what. The situation is not easy. But if we remain in faith, what will come will bring to our lives a before and after. And that is what the Lord wants to give to you. So the journey of faith, it is important for us to give continuity. Continue to pray with us from Monday to Friday. Continue to use your faith. Continue to seek the altar. The altar is available. We will continue in this spirit. And by faith, we will see the Holy Spirit descending in your life in Jesus' name. So right now, Pastor Roni, we will make a special prayer for all of those that are connected with us so that we can continue to use our faith to seek the Lord no matter what, no matter the circumstances, because we're not only going up, but we will remain at the altar. So let us pray together. Let us unite our faith. Please close your eyes. Pastor Roni, please. My God and my Father, that is our faith. Our faith, my Lord, is once we climb the mountain, 
the altar our life remain there because my god we know that our enemy he works in a powerful way to make us to come down from the mountain to come down from the altar because as long we are in the hill he cannot reach our life out to kill steal and destroy so my god right now i ask you to give strength to this person let this person understand that once she has placed her life on the altar she climbed the mountain her life must to remain there that is our faith my god because we know we know my god that this year will not end without this person being baptized with the holy spirit those who are in this faith there where you are right now receive the presence of god we determine here from the altar my god we bind here together on earth and by faith it is done by you in heaven in the name of our lord jesus christ my lord because what we said before i insist on it you don't want my lord only to improve a life of someone to remove them only my lord from the situation that they have been living for so long what you want my lord is to live within them that is what you want because once you are within my lord they will overcome any type of problem it doesn't matter what comes against them because that is what you give to them my lord. you give to them the completion that they need my lord you give to them everything so i ask you now lord jesus give this person the strength to keep on seeking you to keep on fighting to keep on my lord connected with you no matter what no matter the struggles no matter the difficulties it is what we pray and it is what we determine in jesus name and everything my lord that is surrounding this person that is trying my lord to deviate her faith it is being destroyed as we pray and the power of the lord comes to you and strengthens you in this moment it is what i determine and if you believe you receive right now in jesus name take a deep breath and receive right now the strength receive right now the breath of life what you need to keep on moving forward to remain in the presence of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you believe that is what happens right now, let me share with you a Bible verse to finalize this program. In the book of Psalms, in the chapter 113, verse 7. Book of Psalms, 113, verse 7. It says there, he raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap that he may seat with princes, with the princes of his people. So you see that the Lord, he raises the poor out of the dust. He raises and gives to him a seat with the princes. It is a total transformation. He just not gives a simple thing to take away that momentarily need that he has, that that person has. No. He transforms the life as a whole. So that's what the Lord wants to do with you. It is what he did to this testimony, and it is what will happen to you. So let's keep on using our, our faith. During this week, as we said just moments ago, we will give continuity to the journey of faith. Stay connected. The altar is available. We will use our faith. And in this week, the week of the Mount Sinai, the week of revolt, the power of the Lord through His Spirit will descend upon your life. So we invite you to attend in church. This Wednesday, we will have a special Bible study that will be very important to open your mind spiritually. We invite you to attend at 11 a.m., 4 p.m., but most importantly, at 10 p.m. in our main service that I will be with you all this Wednesday at 11 a.m., 4 p.m., but most importantly, at 10 p.m. Make an effort to come, to seek, to attend, 
and the Lord will guide you greatly. And it's very important to remember that you do not need to wait until Wednesday. Of course, you can prepare yourself to be with us this Tuesday, tomorrow, where Pastor Roni will be with you also, 11 a.m., 4 p.m., but Pastor Roni, most importantly, at 10 p.m. At 10 p.m., because we believe, Pastor Rodrigo, that the time of miracle is not over. Those who believe, yes, they still time for them to use their faith in the miracles that they are in need of, they can receive. Exactly. So we invite you to come and join this Tuesday, the healing prayer. Of course, we will continue to seek the Holy Spirit with everything that we have because it is a preparation for this coming Sunday. This coming Sunday, we will do a special prayer once again at 11 a.m. But of course, before we reach this Sunday, attend this Wednesday with the Bible study that is very important for your spiritual growth. And also we will be tomorrow, Tuesday, in the healing prayer, but also seeking the Holy Spirit. Okay? The address of our UCKG here in Macau is down below. And as always, the social media is available for you to contact us. Continue to use your faith. We will remain at the altar. And the Lord, He will rise you. He will rise you from the ashes, from the dust, to take a seat with the princess. Remember that. Don't forget, because that is what the Lord wants to do in your life. And it is what will happen once the Holy Spirit descends upon you. May the Lord bless you all greatly in Jesus' name. And I'll see you here tomorrow in the journey of faith. God bless you all.